Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. And so in this video, I want to give you a five minute overview of how you can use JWT with an example of using a node in Express. But you can take these ideas and apply it to whatever language you want, like Python and Django, PHP and Laravel. But let's just dive into it to save some time. Right here, I have a server.js file, which is hosting an Express application. And the main thing I want to talk about in this app is we have a URL called slash login, and we also have a URL called slash add. So these are the main things we're going to focus on. But just to kind of make sure you're not in the dark, we do have two static files that are hosted. We have an index file that is located here that has a form and a login button. And then we have a welcome page, which also has a button that just makes a really basic request to the add page. And then finally, we have a cookie parser set up so that we can take the JWT and put it in the user's cookie. So we have a login form here and we are gonna hit that login endpoint. So I do have a test username typed in and a password typed in. And so when I click on login, I wanna show you what kind of happens. So it's going to hit this express service and it's going to go to this login route, okay? So inside of my routes folder, I have a login file. And let me just walk you through this code real quick. We are basically including a JSON web token package or library, which allows us to sign and verify JWT tokens. And this is the endpoint that we're hitting. And to kind of walk you through this really quick, we grab the username and password that came over the payload. We checked in the database for that user based on the email they provided or username they provided. And then we verify is the password that's stored in the database matching the one that the user sent in in the login page. If it's not, we just go ahead and throw an error back. But the important part of this whole endpoint is the signing process. So we have a jdbt.sign function call here. And we are taking that user object that we got back from the database and we are just signing it. Okay. So what that means is it takes an object and it basically will <clears throat> look at the payload and it will create a hash and put it as a signature at the end of the JWT. And we'll, we'll talk about this at near the end of the video of how a JWT is composed. But a second important part to point out is that we have to provide a secret here. So you notice here we have processing and be my secret. So when I host my server, this is actually set to, I think, hello. So let me refresh this. Yeah, so this is an environment variable that I set to hello here. And that is what we're using to sign our JWT. This is important because this prevents anyone else out there from just creating JWTs and hitting your server to try to access it, right? They have to know the exact same password that your server used in order to create a JWT token to uh, hit your endpoint. And then the third thing that's really important to talk about is the expires in property here. So Usually JWT tokens have an expiration date and the shorter they are, the, the more secure, the safer. I'm just going to do one hour here to kind of show you, but typically you want to do like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, and so we create this token and that is what we can use as kind of like the key that the user can use to hit our endpoints and we can verify that, hey, is this user actually the correct user? Uh, so after we have the token, we are going to set a cookie on the response header so that the browser can actually say, hey, I have a cookie I need to set in my browser and keep track of it. And then later on, the browser will send that cookie when it does for uh, future requests. Uh, some things I want to point out here is it's usually most safe to use an HTTP only cookie. Uh, there's also some other flags that you can look into if you want to make this more secure, but I'm not going to do that in this example. And then we redirect them to a welcome page. So let's just go back here and click that login button. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is we hit that login endpoint here and we are doing a post request to that endpoint. But the important part is that the response comes back with a set cookie in the header, right? So this is that token that we we're talking about and the server told our browser that we need to set that cookie. So to further exemplify that, let's click on this application tab and let's go down here to storage where it says cookies and click on our URL. So you'll notice that the cookie is actually set with this token keyword and we have the cookie, or we have the JWT token here, right? We're gonna talk about the token uh, in just a bit, like what this actually is, because it looks like a random jumble of characters. Um, but just know that whenever we make a future request, that token is going to be put onto a header. So let's further check this out. We have a button here on the welcome page, which just does a post request to that slash add endpoint, okay? So before I click it, let's go back to our server. Notice that we have an add endpoint. But the main difference with this route is that we do have some middleware set up to make sure that the cookie is provided. So this is like a secured route. We don't want anyone just hitting this endpoint. We want someone who is authenticated and we want to maybe check their user ID to do some logic. 
So before we do the logic, we're going to use this middleware function to basically take the token out of the cookie and verify it. All right, so here we are saying get the token based on that token key that we talked about here. Get the token out of the cookie and then we verify it. Okay, so this is a library function call we can do to basically pass it a token. And then we also pass it that secret key that we talked about earlier that we use for signing the token. And if the token that came in has the exact same key in the signature as the one that is set here, then this will just work. It'll return the decoded token to us, which happens to be that user that we signed here. And then we can access things that we put on that, right? So for example, the user ID. But in this middleware, I'm just gonna set it on my request and call next, which will allow us to go to the next step in the route endpoint, which happens to be this add route which will just basically redirect us to a welcome page. So let me just go ahead and click that and show you. So notice here, it did a request to the add page. Again, that, that cookie was set in the header here. We have that cookie here. And the server basically took that cookie, verified it, and called the next um, step in the process, which is redirect to welcome. And notice that we also got a request to welcome because our browser was redirected to it. Let's talk about the other scenario where the token is invalid or the token was expired. Okay, so let's go back to our login and let's make this expire after one second. So now if I were to go back and kind of clear out my cookie here and go back to the login page, if I were to type in that same stuff, so notice that when I log in, we still get that cookie. But now, since it expires after one second, if I make this request here, it's actually going to take this else path, which is going to clear the cookie for us automatically and redirect us back to the login page. Let's just go ahead and click that. And you'll notice that the cookie is removed from the cookie section here. We don't all, we no longer have a token and we are back at the login page. So that is my like um, invalidation logic setup. Uh, and I think that's about it. So let's change the, re the expires back to an hour. The last thing I want to show you all though, which is kind of important is like, what is a JWT token? Like, what is it made up of? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make another token. Let's just go ahead and grab that JWT token. And I want to paste it into a website called JWT.io. All right. So if you go to JWT.io and go to this debugger section, you can actually paste in your token. And what this does is it's going to split apart your token into the various parts and kind of show you what it's made up of. So Every token usually has a header section, which is this red section. It has your payload or your body, which is the purple section. And then it has a signature. Okay, so this signature is created using that secret key that we set in our server. And then also with the header and the payload. So it basically takes the header and the payload and the secret creates a hash. And it puts that at the end of your JWT token. Again, this allows us to basically verify that any token that comes to our server has the exact same hash that we expect because we are the ones who know how to sign and verify tokens with that secret key. And what you can do here is if you were to paste in some random stuff, like I'll just type in some random characters and paste our existing token. Notice down here it says invalid signature. But if I were to put hello and repaste our signature, Notice that it says signature verified. So this is basically the same steps our server's taking. It's just using this secret string of hello and making sure that this token was actually issued by myself, by my own processes. And if it wasn't, we can just throw an exception. You can also do some different stuff here. Like I could change the user ID to one. And notice that the key will change a little bit. So let's say you were to change the user ID to one, but you didn't have the correct secret like this. If I were to take this token and just go to my application and paste it in, notice that when I click on my make a request button, it's actually going to log me out and redirect me to the login page because again, that token was bad, right? Someone just tried to hack or spoof a token to our system and basically our application logged you out. Now the very last tidbit of information I wanna talk about with the token is that the body and the header are basically just base 64 encoded strings okay so if you go to a base64 decoder and paste it in and click decode you'll notice that you just get back a, a json object here okay so there's nothing really like confusing or special about these two and you can see that they kind of decoded them for us over here it's mainly the signature over here which is just a hash um, which that's for another lesson but go read up on what hashes is 
um, just so we can use that to verify our token on the server. All right, so that basically wraps up my quick overview of JWT with Node and Express. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. Maybe I can come back and answer them. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this video. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to have videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. All right, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.